and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and we're here today with another installment of our nosegay sew along, right? This is the quilt that we're talking about here today. We are going to be showing you how to do the crown or how to assemble the crown part of the, the nosegay. But first I want to talk to you about Lori Dickman. She is on a YouTube channel and she's just getting started and she's got some lot of fun stuff going on there. So we're going to put her link in the show notes below so you get the opportunity to go check her out if you want and tell her Brenda sent you. So the other thing is we have a Facebook group. Now we're when we're filming this I'm not sure whether we're doing this as a we've already voted already and we've decided or we're still voting or what. So we're, we have hold a virtual sew date once a month and they're a lot of fun and people pop in and out and we just have a great old time and it's it's a lot of it's a lot of giggling and chatting and you know I also get lots done well, I get lots of sewing done um, the uh, the other thing with the Facebook group is we're trying out the option of rooms so that means we have impromptu sew dates within the members of that group so if you want to join Facebook just to to get in there there'll be the link in the show notes below so come on in we got lots of sewing to do today okay now what I do is I put all the block pieces into a, a Ziploc bag and I reuse these over and over and over again. So what I've done with this bag is I've just pulled out the crown pieces that I'm going to be using, right? The diamonds. So now what I have done is I just arrange them so like this. I know how I'm going to arrange them because I'm doing a rainbow of colors. I don't know if you can see all of that together or not. So I'm doing a rainbow and you can do you don't have to do a rainbow, you can do whatever you need to do there, or whatever crumbs or whatever color palette you were working with. But I'm doing a rainbow. Now, what I try and do is I make sure my crown, first off, I've got some pretty, I've got some solids in here. So I want those solids to go up against stuff that's pretty dark, you know, or busy, right? I want a variety of textures, like I don't want two florals against another floor. I don't want another floral against another floral because you don't really get good definition then, right? So, and I do, I don't want spots against spots. So I'm going to take this spot, take these spots away. But yeah, these are, they come together and you're just going to sew them on a very easy little, you know, quarter inch. And I'm going to get this like that. There. And you just... You want to just line them up. Take your time. Take your time lining them up. Then I do four, four of these at a time. Um, <laughs> I've been sewing these. As I've been taking the bag and I've just been dumping the bag and trying to sew as much as I can on all of the pieces so that I have just basically the fiddly bits, the outside edge, the crown and the, the cone to deal with, right? So then I'm not, you know, I'm not struggling with a bunch of stuff. So I'm going to take this brighter one and put it up against this pale pink. And, oops, there we go. Come on, come on, come on. there we go. There, we go. there. So I try and mix up the textures too in the crown. I don't want, I don't want floral after floral after floral. Like here's a real busy graphic and here's another busy graph, you know, but it's, it looks more solid with a spot. So I can put those two together. So. I wouldn't want to put stripe upon stripe or polka dot against polka dot either. So this one is darker. So yeah, I had fun going through my crumbs, cutting all these little pieces. I'm doing that five inch scale. So this kind of works out pretty good for me. And just line them up and you sew them all the same. You just go through, you sew them all the same. It's real easy piecing. Now get all the purples out and I'm going to take the darkest and put it with the lightest blue because it's kind of a heart plaid is kind of cute against that. Yeah, I was kind of surprised how much stuff I had and I didn't even make a, a dent in my crumbs. Not even a dent. Take the darkest to the lightest. Here. And put the blue on top. Now if you're setting them a certain way, like I'm doing a rainbow, so that means all of my bags I'm sewing the same way. I'm starting with the yellow and orange and then the pink and the red, you know. So 
Okay, um, these two will go. Like, so you want to keep that, if you want to keep that rainbow appearance, then you, you would want to do all of your crowns at once and do them all the same way. Uh, but if you're just doing random, okay, let's put it together, you know, kind of thing. Yeah, that works too, you know? Okay, so now I've got all my pieces of my crown done. So I'm going to take these and take all the, the orange yellow and work with them first. And I'm just going to finger press them for now. Because I'm doing uh, half hand sewing or half machine sewing, half hand sewing. If you're working in the 9 to 12, you're already doing like everything is by machine because the pieces are big enough, right? Where if you're doing the 6 or the 5, it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit tighter working, right? Okay, let's get all the reds and the red and pink parts of the crown out. Oh. Now at this point, some people prefer to put the outside edge on because they're only dealing with this part, right? I, yeah, there's an advantage to it, but yeah, not really, not really, I'm not really keen on that. I, if I'm hand sewing, I want to hand sew all the same thing at one time. So I'm going to try and do a larger block where I show you how to assemble all the pieces together and then one that is uh, a little more you know with hand sewing I don't know how long they're going to be because like wow they could be a really long video with the hand sewing but and then you just match you can feel that seam right there right so you match up that seam and then you sew your quarter inch on this side Okay, and you just go right off the edge, and I'm going to put this and this together, because that looks... Am I going to get more contrast that way? So I'm just going to nest them in, and the last one. Okay. Okay, and I'll get the blue off, blue and the purple off of here. And then we can see where we're at. Now, when you're pressing the little ones at the very end, you know, like pressing them all flat, um, I would recommend you get one of those clover irons, those wee tiny little clover irons, if you're, you know, because otherwise they're, they're really difficult to press open. And then these, you just take them, you press them ov open over like that. So they're all laying the same way. They'll all go the same direction, right? And they kind of, they'll spin then on their, on this axis, right? So I'm getting them all there that way. And I'm going to put, uh, let's see, this, this and this together. I've got some good contrast there. Now, this purple one, I want you to think about this. You're going to put, you've got your quarter inch here, your quarter inch is there, right there. So you have to line up your purple so that, that purple seam will cross right there. Now you can either do it with pins or you can eyeball your quarter inch and decide where you're going to cross over that seam. But you don't sew over the seam. You sew up to the seam, you backstitch through your four and then you go forward. And then you pull it away like that because you want that to open. I'll show you what I, what, I, what I mean as soon as I can get this one off. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's get another one on here. So again, you're going to line them up as best you can so that it makes that perfect edge, right? And here. But this is the part that's blind, right? So you want to go a quarter inch from that seam. Now you can pin that if you like. And that goes there. And then you don't cross over that sewn, that sewn thread that sews the purple and the blue. Okay, because otherwise, otherwise you won't be able to open, up, open it up. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Yes, it's perfect. It's right there. And uh, so, so it goes all the way there. Yes, it does. And back, cross, and there. Now, 
you 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 can pin if you want but what happens is this thing opens up now and you have a perfect little point you have a point now whether you're hand sewing or machine sewing you have a perfect little point where all of those areas come together that you can needle match to or, or whatever okay so let's try this again you take yeah you take this seam you go across like this you lay it all out so everything matches okay you lay it all out so everything matches you push this other one out of the way now you get in there and you just okay you can actually feel where the red and pink is the seam there and the blue and purple kind of nest right they kind of they get in there and they nest so you can feel that that's also another indication that you're in the right spot and you just go up to the seam you don't cross over where it's been sewn and I'll show you that okay and I'll show you that where okay you don't cross over where where this has been sewn right so I'm just gonna get a pencil here okay this is your seam that puts your blue and blue and purple together right this seam right here right where I just ran marked the pencil this is the seam you sewn but you don't go across you don't cross this sewn seam okay and that gives you when you take it off the sewing machine it gives you a nice little point that you can match everything up to because your next block that you're putting in is at a right angle right okay so <laughs> one oh, we'll get the last one done here and this take does take a little pr practice but you can feel how that that nested those those these points these seams here nest and it also helps you line up everything right because everything is a 45 degree diamond and okay just check yes oh beautiful okay let's just go up to where the sewing is back up and go forward pull apart there we go there and just fold it over out of the way I had a nice crisp point there again and I'm just gonna get this one off the machine and here show you what I mean there huh. another little nice sharp little point to work with okay all right we'll show <laughs> all right we'll do our big ta-da moment then aren't these cute they're like the cutest little crowns you've ever seen I just love this <laughs> I just love the colors that are part we're gonna be part of this little crown on my five inch square now this is where they would go and you can see the quilt behind me here is quite a bit bigger than my my little crown right because you can see there's this doesn't even cover the diamonds right so that's where this is going to go on this on this quilt now I have been asked to show how to put the larger ones together by sewing machine so I will do that and I'll and they've also asked how to put them together by hand sewing so that's going to be a very long video but it is what it is because you guys need to know how long each block is going to take you to do if you're sewing the if you're sewing a 12 or a 9 inch finished block like the bigger ones that I've designed is you only have to make nine blocks to get a good size quilt like this and then you add your sashing you know again you've got like a, a larger quilt so that's going to be next those two videos are going to be next but we're spacing them out to give you guys some time to okay now the guys that are doing the no why seam beginner if you've got all your cones done and all your the top the four crown pieces right you can sew them together just like a four patch you're good to go so anyways I hope you have a wonderful week ahead and just everything in your sewing room goes goes your way um, it'll it, this has been so much fun this so long has been so awesome to do with all of you and your cats coming into the room but that's okay I hope you have a great great week and you take care okay bye my husband and I would love to thank you for 
coming along with us on our little fun adventure here that we're having. We do have a Facebook group now, and that Facebook group is got some very very talented quilters in there and we love sharing and, and you know posting pictures and commenting and it's it's been a lot of fun and the advantage of the Facebook group is sometimes I drop patterns in there early so you kind of get a hint as to what is coming next after the nosegay so long we're going to be doing curves boot camp right away so we'll get you sewing those curves and it'll be fun it'll be a lot of it'll be a lot of interesting little blocks that we've got to work on but we would like you to share, like, and subscribe. Telling your friends about us and, and letting them know that you kind of like our channel, that, that means so much to us here. So you take care. You have a fabulous week ahead. Okay, bye.